Oh, you've made your special onion soup. Yes, I thought it would be nice, you know, to have a little lunch and discuss the upcoming recipes for the show. It's a wonderful soup. It's got so much flavor. And do you have that secret ingredient in there? The one you won't divulge to anyone, even to me? Oh, yes, it's in there. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Go and get washed up. Sometimes all you need is one secret ingredient. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well, Steve, soup is the topic of the day, and you have a few tips that you'd like to give our viewers about how to make a really good soup? Absolutely, Carl. What I like to do is to make my soup well in advance, even the day beforehand, to really get the aromatic flavours through, especially with lots just like one here today. We've got a vegetable and a broth there. To eat it straight away, it's almost too fresh for you. So mm -hmm. you want those flavours actually to come through. And, uh, but if it was a case of a cream soup, I'd almost eat that the day off, so to speak. So I don't want that to break down too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things always seem to taste better the next day. Absolutely. At least this type of dish, and mm -hmm. I guess the same would go for stew. Exactly, exactly, because then it would break down all the flavors you see. So mm -hmm. What about uh, seasoning? Uh, what's, your, what's your view on seasoning of soups? I guess it's always important not to put too much salt in. Exactly. Uh, th that one, I would, <laughs> I'm on the fence with. I'd let the customer add a little bit more to it rather than in the beginning. So to speak, yeah, that's so. right. Yeah. Well, uh, there's, as they say, there's nothing like a good pot of soup. Absolutely. And uh, coming up on the program today, we'll be uh, making a lot more than soup. Uh, we have as our special guest Dave Sullivan. Dave is a creative writer in the marketing industry, and uh, he's actually worn many hats in his life. And what are we going to be making? We're going to be making some beautiful chicken enchiladas. So we're going to go Mexican. And Chef Ed Farrell will be here, and Ed's going to be making a warm spinach salad with steak. So stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600 or send us an email at onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. Well, Dave Sullivan is a writer, but he's also been an educator, an actor, a comedian. Uh, he's a guy who's worn many hats, so I'm not exactly sure how to introduce you today, but I'm really happy you're here. <laughs> I prefer occupational vagabond. Okay. That works. That's, that's good. I like that. Okay. Well, as uh, an occupational vagabond, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. So what, what do you have for, for us today? We're going to um, go a little Mexican. We're going to do some chicken enchiladas. And uh, Carl's going to be making a little bit of Mexican rice there. We've got oh, some, am I? Okay. Yes, absolutely. You're going to be sauteing them off. We've got okay. some beans and peppers. I think and I all can that handle kind of stuff, that. So. Right on. So, Dave, you feel comfortable around the kitchen or what? I, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <A little> <laughs> Well, so I've got our pan nice and hot here. I'm going to get you to start off on a little, little bit of oil. I'll get you saute some onions and garlic, and uh, then we'll add our chicken, some spices, and away we go. Excellent. So there right. we go. And I'll, I'm just going to dive in. start this. Yeah, off. dive in. Just put, put half that amount in I'm there, and I'll turn the pan up. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Perfect. And then I'll give you this. Right. And I'm not going to be shy with the garlic. There you go. Don't you be shy with the garlic. I love the garlic. Okay. There Bring it on. That. Right. Perfect. So Dave, I've got to ask, because yeah. of your, your background in comedy, were you the funny kid in school? I was not the funny kid in school. I was the, uh, I was kind of the quiet kid in school. Okay, really? So yeah, I was. Yeah, well, it's, I know it's a bit of a surprise. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> so you were a bit of a late bloomer when it comes to comedy. A I little guess. bit, yeah. I mean, yeah. I had kind of funny thoughts, but I never really ex mm -hmm. expressed them out mm -hmm. loud. And then uh, over time, it just sort of... Evolved. Yeah, I, yeah. Just, I probably just needed to entertain myself, and that's probably how I discovered it. <laughs> A lot of long, yeah. deep thinking yeah. at home, but, uh, but yeah. So, uh, when did when did you get interested in writing? Was it did you kind of write funny stories when you were a kid, or um, I didn't really write all that much when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I first started writing. I remember in high school I wrote a bunch of uh, like a couple of sketches, uh, sketch comedy stuff that was uh, based on. 
uh, something that I saw in uh, used to be a show called In Living Color with the Wayans brothers. Oh, I remember and Jim that Perry. show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was based on that, and then uh, slowly after that, I just started writing bit by bit, and yep. uh, and yeah, it just sort of took hold, and I started writing plays, mm -hmm. and then I started uh, writing comedy with the Dance Party of Newfoundland, and just then it switched to advertising, and then blogs, <laughs> and I don't know. It's just. It's yeah. just unraveled completely now. It's just <laughs> so I'm thinking the dance party of Newfoundland um, gig kind of that happened when you were fairly young, right? Uh, I had just gotten back from South Korea where I was teaching uh, for about a year and a half, maybe. Okay. Yep. And uh, so a bunch of us got together uh, at the old Rabbit Town uh, Theater, which was the Seventh Day Adventist School up there on Maryland. That's right. Yeah. Um, Aiden Flynn's place. Aiden Flynn's place, yeah. 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 And uh, we just sort of joined forces. I would have been 27. After. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just got a little bit of. And so that, that original troop consisted in of uh, yourself, Johnny Harris, uh, Phil Churchill, and Steve Cochran. Um, um, and that's and Aiden Flynn was actually in our first and show. And Susan Kent, well, when, where did she come in? Susan Kent joined the group. Uh, I left in 2000 and, uh, 2009. Right. I took yep. a leave of absence. I left yep. the group to go study education ah. at, uh, okay. at Memorial. And so Sue took over for me and uh, joined the group, which is excellent. She's hilarious. Um, uh, she's, of course, now in This Hour's 22 That's minutes. right. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, you mentioned uh, you went off to study education. Now, mm -hmm. you, you went quite a distance there because you graduated with a master's in education. I, I'm close to the master's. I don't quite have okay, it Okay, you don't yeah, quite yeah, have yeah, it? I'm just finishing a thesis now. Okay, right? yeah. well, I've just graduated you. <laughs> which I feel honored. Which is good. Uh, I've got a hood. The gown? I've, I've yeah. got the hood waiting. I'll put it on you. Put after. Uh, yeah. so, but you, you've never really, you've taught briefly, I think. I taught briefly, yeah. I, I spent a year in Korea teaching kindergarten. Okay. Uh, and then... I spent about a year and a half uh, substituting mm -hmm. around the city, and um, I graduated with a degree in uh, technology education. Oh, okay. Um, and I really liked robotics and things like that. Yep. So, um, and after a while, uh, I really just couldn't find a full-time job teaching. And uh, the university offered me a full-time job as a as a copywriter, oh. which I'd never done before in my life. <laughs> And I, yeah. I guess I sort of marketed my way into the job, <laughs> and uh, and so I took that, and that's sort of how I got involved in uh, in advertising. Right. So your your first job as a copywriter was with Mun. With Mun, yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. interesting. What sort of things were you writing? Um, I write advertising. I write digital advertising, social okay. media advertising. Um, we do. Um, Videos, uh, different videos around the university, okay. uh, annual yeah. reports, things right. like that. Yeah, um, and they they were a real creative bent. They had a real creative zeal to them. Yeah, back then, so it and was a lot of fun. And so now you're working for an advertising agency, right? Yes, and cooking chicken apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll see how that works out. I know. <laughs> now, while you've been talking and stirring, what we put in there, we put some chopped green chilies in there, yeah. put a little bit of corn, we put some chopped tomatoes in there, oh. I put a little bit more cayenne in there, and some, and some taco sauce to so really spice that up. And all we're going to do is really just only warm that through, yeah. because we're going to be putting that into a flour tortilla. You can use a corn tortilla, but we've chosen to use a flour tortilla well, today. Can you so reassure me and tell me that I'm doing a good job? I think you're doing an excellent yes. job, absolutely. Yes, I just, yes. I've totally put them off, off, off. <laughs> I have a job to do. Yeah. <laughs> And here you are chatting. I know. Yeah. <laughs> chatting, yeah. So, so did, did you get a chance to travel with the comedy group and all that? We did, yeah. yeah. We, traveled, we performed in uh, New York and in Chicago. And, uh, Was that intimidating? Um, not I, mean, I mean, New York, Chicago, <laughs> Chicago, second city for heaven's yeah, sake. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, that's really intimidating well, stuff. This is just a crowd of people you don't know, you know. <laughs> so, you know whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it was interesting. Yeah, it was certainly a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and we did just for laughs in Montreal uh, yeah, right, yeah, in two thousand nine, yeah. which was a laugh. And we've done second city in Toronto. And yeah. So yeah, we got around quite a bit. Now. Uh, <sighs> I mean, some of your comedy yeah, no, uh, was kind of uh, Newfoundland centric, I guess. I mean, how, how, how did how did that play in a city like Chicago or New York? 
uh, surprisingly well. Really? Yeah, yeah, they got it, which was really interesting. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we slowed down a bit and we sort of yeah. hammered the diction a little bit, you know? Right, yeah. You know, sort of nailed the T's a little harder than we would yeah. <laughs> normally. I know years ago so. I saw Codco perform in Montreal and I wasn't exactly sure that they were getting it. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but so that's that's really great, though, yeah. that uh, you, you had that positive feedback from yeah. the audience. Lots of fun. So, um, you know, if circumstances were different, would you would you have preferred to have like a full time career in comedy? Uh, I don't think so. I think I'm really happy where I'm at now, and I, I enjoy yeah. what I do. And yes. uh, comedy's great, but I just didn't like the travel. Ah, um, yeah. And uh, I yeah, I got afraid of flying a little bit. I can, you know, I can, I can totally, I can totally understand that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, I mm. yeah, I enjoyed it, but I'm I'm happy where I'm at. Mm. I'd say. So as you can see there, I'm just. Um, Wrapped some of the tortillas with some of our filling there, Excellent. a little bit more of the sauce on the top. Then we'll just nicely put some cheese on there, some taco cheese. Wow. I think that looks just pretty good. Absolutely. I think that Thank looks you. Very good. I think it's going to want something. What do you think of mine? It's really great. <laughs> a lot of color, a lot of color there. I think we've got a colorful feast. Uh, on very, the very much so. I don't know, Carl. I think mine's a little bit better than yours. Uh, well, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, what we're going to uh, do we now... We have to make the guests look good. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do now, we're going to pop that in the oven for uh, about half an hour. Excellent. Okay. Well, while you're popping that into the oven, I'm going to go down to the wine cellar and see if we can get a wine. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. And as you can see, I do have a couple just in here. Mm -hmm. How does that look? Perfect. Awesome. There we go. We've got our Mexican rice. We've got a chicken enchiladas there and away we're going to go to the races and some for you to take home as well if you wish really there you go you know hi andrea hi, how are you Great. well we have chicken enchiladas today cheesy chickeny and a little bit of kick to it so um what are we gonna What are we gonna serve with this? Well, we uh, need party wine. We need. Well, I, th I think the party's already started. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> well, you can't see any lipstick on there, so you know that I haven't taken a sip yeah. yet. <laughs> so we have some some really nice light selections there to go along with this. We have the twelve gauge from Ock Island. Twelve gauge refers to twelve fruits that are in there. They're all Newfoundland berries and fruits. So from partridge berries, blueberries, right on down. Right. Um, okay. So what's in here is the macerated citrus fruit the 12 gauge wine, the um, club soda, and I always put a little bit of brandy mm. in my sangria as well. So that's a really Just great refreshing measure, choice. Exactly. Brandy, yes. We have Blanc Lime, which is from Bordeaux, primarily Sauvignon Blanc because it comes from Entre du Mer, but this is um, was a popular wine in the 30s and 40s in France, in kind of bistro sipping, nice fresh, um, so fruit and floral um, flavors that are introduced in here, a slight little bit of sparkle, it's got a little bit of residual sugar so it's going to hold up well to the spice in the dish and be really nice and refreshing. That and looks course, like a 1930s label exactly, actually, doesn't yeah, it? Exactly, yeah, that's perceptive, yeah. Carl, because that, that's exactly the vintage mm -hmm. that they're going yeah. for, that it's from. And then last but not least, we have the Elias Mora, which is um, from, it's a Tempranillo from Spain, and traditionally that would be what you would use in a sangria as well. So if you want to be a little bit more traditional, you can go with that one, but I think it's a lot of fun to try the, um, the local fruit wines for sangria okay. too. Hey, wow, well, this, uh, this is quite a choice I have to make here. You made it hard for you. Well, uh, it's not because I love this uh, vintage label, but uh, which I do. I mean, it's great. Yeah. Uh, but I think this uh, sounds like a nice kind of light drink, kind of a party drink, and we have a party dish going up there today. So I'm going to choose the Blanc Lime. Yeah, and you won't be sorry. It's delicious. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, we'll just add a little bit more of Carl's beautiful Mexican rice there. And... Uh, We'll go and see if both Carl and Dave are wearing their sombreros. Well, I wasn't sure about which wine to go with, but uh, I think this one is going to work. So there you go. Perfect. But more importantly, let's see how the enchilada mm. tastes. I've never, I've never had an enchilada. Well, there's I a hope first I time for everything. Yeah. I usually waste stuff all over myself. <laughs> I just hope it doesn't happen here. Very good. That was really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is um, excellent. Yeah, yeah. In my view, in my humble opinion, <laughs> that is an excellent enchilada. Mm. Probably the best enchilada I've ever had. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. That's Certainly. That's, that's, yeah. Uh, what a great team. Absolutely. Mm, yeah. That's the best enchilada I've ever had, too. That's a yeah. four-star enchilada. Never had one before. Never had one before. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Um, 
Just to get a little bit serious, um, you, you've uh, become quite well known recently for a radio um, blog, I guess, or mm -hmm. what would you call it? I don't know, they call it a column. A, col uh, a radio column mm -hmm. that you did for CBC called Downsizing, and mm -hmm. it was about your journey. Uh, through weight loss? Yeah, so uh, yeah. It was, what, yeah. What, what's kind of triggered that? Because you, 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 so far you've lost about 90 pounds. Right? I have, yeah. Which is, that's a, congratulations by the way. Yeah, absolutely. That yeah. is a yeah, heck yeah. of an accomplishment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard I work. know how hard it is to lose <laughs> weight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, um, It just started, I started a blog um, called The Narcissist's Revenge, which is a strange name, but I was writing that for a while, um, just about the journey and sort of my experiences with it because I didn't, I, I just needed to sort of, I need to talk things out mm. and I thought if I'm going to do it, you know, I'm only going to do it once and I'm going to do it right and I'm going to be open and honest about what was happening to me and, and the things that I felt and and so yeah, that's what I did and uh, CBC um, caught on to it and read it and picked it up and I thought it was just going <laughs> to go around Newfoundland and uh, I was out on Jerry's nose on the Port of Port Peninsula, uh, standing up right on the nose, <laughs> and I got a, I got an email from Heather Barrett, the producer, saying it's just been picked up for national syndication, and I was like, uh, "Was that mean?" <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Fabulous. And yeah. so she said, "Well, it means this," and so that's that's great. It means and a lot more people get to hear it, and a lot of people yeah. heard it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, and which is great. It's not why I did it, um, but but I'm I'm glad that people responded to it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, for me, I wanted to be, I wanted to be honest with myself and honest about the process of, of what it actually right. tastes. Yeah. You hear a lot of people, it's yeah. diet and exercise, just diet and exercise. What's your problem? Get your butt off the couch and just go to the gym. And yeah. it's like, it's, no, it's, it's not that simple. It's not that easy. It's psychological as well. Isn't it's it? very much psychological. And there's, yeah. there's a lot of, there are a lot of things connected to weight and, um, it, they're like nerve endings and they hurt and, you know, you start plucking them away and it gets more difficult. And I think people, uh, men in particular, um, responded um, sort of uh, in, a, in a very strong way to that. And because there's not a lot, like, you don't hear a lot about men uh, talking about body shame issues. And, you, like, it just doesn't happen. It's no, like, you're no, a dude, no. just put on a plaid shirt, drink a beer, you're going to be fine. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But it, that's yeah. not the case. Like, it's, yeah. you know, we all feel something, like, yeah. you yeah. know. Uh, do you mind my asking, uh, what, what, what's the heaviest you've ever been, like when you started out, how, how heavy were um, you? When I first weighed myself, this was two months after I sort of started, I was 415. Oh, wow. Um, but I was, I, was, yeah. I was much bigger than that. I, yeah. um, I did an episode of uh, Murdoch Mysteries, right. and I remember watching it going, who oh, is the guy in that and it was like well, that's that's yeah. that's me like yeah. what happened <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I think at that point I must have been about 15 pounds over mm. that so I, I would guess I was probably 430 yeah. in my heaviest yeah. well listen I, 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 I congratulate you I'm like totally impressed by what you've been able to accomplish and I, I wish you all the best in the future, and Thank I look you. forward to seeing you on Cheers, stage Dave. again one of these days. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Very funny wow. guy. Thank you, Dave Sullivan. And coming up next, we have Chef Ed Farrell with us. He's uh, representing Granite by Portobello's, and he's going to make a warm spinach salad. Well, our guest chef today is owner of one of the most popular and newest dining spots in the city of St. John's, Granite by Portobello's. Granite is situated on Duckworth Street to take advantage of an absolutely fabulous view of the harbor of St. John's. It's a modern, a contemporary restaurant, a relaxed sort of place, a nice spot actually for a business lunch after work drinks or casual evening dining. The menu at Granite by Portobello's is bistro style with contemporary flair and we're absolutely delighted to welcome Ed Farrell to One Chef, One Critic. It's great to have you with us again. Thanks Ed. for having me back. And what are you going to make for us today? Today we have one of our signature salads. It's our warm spinach salad from our regular menu. We have AAA Black Angus tenderloin. Mm -hmm. It's going to be mixed with a uh, soy ginger marinade. Right. 
Then we're going to saute some fresh ingredients from shiitake mushrooms, sweet bell peppers, sliced red onion, cherry tomatoes. Okay. Mix it all together with well, fresh spinach. Let's get the show on the road. Absolutely, I'll get the stove turned on. Now, you mentioned black Angus beef. Is that Canadian? Yes, yes it is. It's straight oh, from Alberta. One, straight from Alberta. That's yes. absolutely excellent. So we'll get some good heat on there now yeah. and uh, away we'll go. I remember it was years ago I was in Florida and I saw warm spinach salad on the menu and I thought, how can you have a warm spinach <laughs> salad? It didn't make any sense to me, you know. It's like a double baked but, potato, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. But uh, I had it and I thought it was the best thing I'd ever tasted, but yeah. I believe it was done with chicken livers. Yes. Yes, I remember yeah. that myself. Yeah. yeah. From back in the salad <laughs> yes. days. Right. Yeah. Go right ahead. So there. we're going to just start off with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. Nice and hot. Yes. Yeah. We're going to do a very fast sear on this beef. The beef tenderloin is sliced thin to get a nice sear on each side, and then we're going to use the same pan to saute our fresh ingredients so we incorporate okay, the so flavor. You'll encompass all those flavor there with the caramelization of That's the beef. That's right. Now this has been marinated with some soy. Yep. So yep. we're going to be careful with our salt. Okay. Wonderful. Now we're searing this uh, in a frying pan. Could this be grilled at all? Oh, it sure could, and actually grilling adds a nice char flavor to it. Yeah, yeah. So I'll only season with a little bit of fresh pepper, mm -hmm. no salt. It smells wonderful. And you just want that medium rare to rare it would yes. be? Yes, yeah. depending on how thick you slice your beef. beef. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Excellent. So it's literally just a quick, quick sear. Yep. And we're going to take our beef out. And reserve that for plating. Yep. And look at all that caramelization in there too. Yes, exactly. So from here we'll take our ingredients to take the longer portions. Some red onion. Okay. Some sweet bell peppers. Mm -hmm. We're going to saute these around a little. And this is something you have on the menu at the present time? It is. It? It's okay. one of our signatures and it's yeah. very popular. I don't think it'll leave the menu for quite some yeah. time. <laughs> And of course, all these ingredients are readily available all year round, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah. Through different local suppliers yes, or even yeah. at your local supermarket. Mm -hmm. So you have Portobello's next door to you. Uh, what we was do. the reason for opening the granite? We wanted a more casual side to Portobello's. Yeah. For our dining clientele that come in, enjoy a great night, but maybe they want to finish off with a nightcap or take part in some live music, which we have every okay, week. Okay, excellent. So they don't have to drive, they don't have to have a taxi. Nope. They just walk You can door. walk directly next door. The restaurants are actually adjoined. So we're going to take some cherry tomatoes. Oh, we're going to heat them up as well. Just so. a quick little sear. Sure, sure yeah, yeah. Now we're going to shut off the heat. Okay. And we're going to mix in our soy and ginger garlic vinaigrette. Okay. Oh, the aroma now. Oh, my goodness. So would you have put salt in the vinaigrette, Ed? No, the soy is plenty, plenty in there as it is. Oh, that's right. That's, so that's probably why you didn't add uh, salt to the meat. Exactly. It? Yeah. You will overpower it. So our spinach will go just fresh and in the bowl. And that's just been picked and washed. And, and that's exactly and right. Yeah. Okay. And a nice rustic feel this salad. Just straight on over the top. And what this does is this will give all the dressing that you need yep. for all your greens. Okay. And then we're going to, with our beef that we plated earlier. Oh, wonderful. Mm. And don't waste this juice. Oh, this no, is no, some no. of the best. <laughs> And then we're just going to garnish with some fried wontons. That's okay. nice. So you so just slice them and just deep fry them, is that That's it? exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And from here we'll serve. Okay. So basically what we end up with is granite signature warm spinach salad with tenderloin and soy vinaigrette. That's really beautiful. Absolutely. Eh? That's really, really beautiful. I'm just going to taste one of these things. You go right ahead. Has, uh, the deep fried delights. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, just before we go, though, I I wanted to ask you. Uh, I heard that you're doing wedding a lot of weddings at Granite now. We are. Yes, we have a fantastic room right now that seats about a hundred. Mm. It's a great for the smaller weddings. You have a spectacular mm. view. Absolutely. Plus, you end up having a wedding where you're not stuck with a menu that this is what you get. We give you a tailored menu and we offer a full package. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, that's becoming a, an important part of the restaurant industry these days. Wedding. And that's for about a hundred people. For so 100, there you. Yes. Go, folks, a uh, warm spinach salad featuring some Angus beef. It's just a great lunch uh, and very easy to make, obviously. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there we go, and uh, that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. 
I love your soup. It's got so much flavor. And do you have that secret ingredient in there? The one you won't even divulge to? Even to me? No, okay. What? I don't know. Divulge to anybody. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. We need you out in these streets. I'm out of the game. I know you can kill Ghost. Do it for me. Call one triple eight Rogers one to order. O'Reilly's menu reads like a community newspaper, complete with local stories and happenings, plus an extensive choice of our homemade selections. O'Reilly's Irish Newfoundland Pub is a proud sponsor of One Chef, One Critic. You know what I like? Keeping backs safe. Mine and my team's. And the best way to protect backs is to know how. Like when something's too heavy to be lifted by one person. Bring in that forklift! There's something I had to get out of the way right off the get-go. Is it true that you have a pet pig? I do, Willie. Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Let's taste and see. All right. Uh, Is this hands or cover? Okay. Uh, well, I'll, you can use your hands, but I, I'm, I'm going to use television. Yes. On, radio. <laughs> on radio, this would definitely be your hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're reviving old cocktails now. Exactly. I'm, I am all for it. Manhattans are back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Catch One Chef, One Critic, Sundays at 7 p.m. Watching Rogers TV, St. John's. Proper technique is no accident. It requires thought and attention. So, to remind myself not to twist, I am thinking nose between toes, use your legs. Nose between toes, use your legs. Nose between toes. I can. I can. I can. I can. I did. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Out of the Fog. Well over the next 30 minutes, you're going to hear the personal story of transition from trans activist Dane Woodland, a young man who was born female, but as you're about to hear, started transitioning without even realizing it was happening in his late teens and early 20s. As he says, it happened right under my nose. Now tonight, Dane is going to join me in studio to explain what gender dysphoria is and why he decided to share his story publicly with all of you here tonight on Out of the Fog. Plus, Dane's mom, Wendy Woodland, joins in on the conversation to talk about her reaction and acceptance as she said goodbye to her daughter and welcomed a son. Plus, we hear about the gap for parents when it comes...